so I have chickens, which means I have plenty of eggshells. And I uh, thought I'd try and cook them in the kiln and see if I could use that leftover material as some sort of ingredient in a glaze. So here it is after going through a bisque firing. Kind of what to be expected. Very frail, all the colors burnt out. And this is what we will grind up and use as a calcium source in a glaze made with our own eggshells. So here's how much I got. 49, just a hair over 49 grams and I pulverized it with a stick uh, in the container and it just it crumbled really nicely. I haven't had to sieve this or anything. I don't sense any big pieces. So I'm curious. I'm going to fire some more eggshells so I have a little bit more to play with and then make some different glazes. Because of the high amount of calcium in eggshells and running them through an oxidizing firing experience uh, logically will end up with uh, calcium oxide which is not stable and uh, when exposed to air or water will pick up another carbon and go back to uh, calcium carbonate. That's my theory and so when looking for recipes I looked for recipes that had a high amount of whiting in it whiting being a calcium carbonate I'm not sure what the original source is but it seems like the most likely ingredient that I can use my eggshells to replace. The first time I loaded this, I, I put them in whole. As you saw, I didn't really smash them down. This time, I just kept jamming them in, breaking them up, jamming them in until it was tight packed to the rim. And this time, you can see that lid barely fit. And I had to push it in. So it dropped in its level, but nowhere near what the last one did. And from here, just a simple mortise and pestle, um, a light grinding or pounding makes it into a fine powder. So that's quite a bit, and it by no means used up all my eggshells. So if there was a question in my mind as to whether or not large-scale eggshell uh, cooking for glaze making is possible, uh, this gives me some hope. This feels fairly heavy, so uh, I just wanted to show you that. After using that red iron oxide, before I move on to putting the bentonite in, I do go over to the garbage can and with a dry paper towel, I, I wipe this out. When I'm done with the whole glaze, I'll sponge it and it'll be clean though. The red will go away, but I, I don't want to wet it because it'll be uh, sticky for the bentonite and for the next uh, glaze combo. So dry wipe and then move on. go. So when I go to mix these up, I've used wide mouth jars because I want to use a, an immersion blender to blend them in the jars. And I'll look at them carefully and I'll decide if they look like they need sieving. I think I might end up sieving them all, uh, but especially the the homemade eggshells might have some some pieces in it that I might not like to see. But one thing you might be interested in is how do you tell how much water to put in on something like this? Now this is a 100 gram batch. They're all 100 gram batches. And you can take the opportunity to do kind of a dry shake on these. I don't spend a whole lot of time doing that. The downsides are it does create a bit of a dust kind of plume if you want to open it right away. And the jar really needs to be dry or you'll have material stuck up on the walls that's kind of a pain too. So, maybe a pre-mix, but not much. So I'll use one of these again and I'll keep track of how many uh, mils of uh, liquid I've put in. And in this case I'll start with a hundred. So, have a clean 
pitcher of water here. I draw up a little extra, push it down to the 50 mark in this case. And that's 100. 100 in my mind is kind of a good starting point. And I'll take a... Once you start to know how much your glaze is going to take, you don't have to be so slow to come up to it each time, but this is looking good already. So I'll try to get as much as I can off of my mixing stick. Now I'm seeing that it's kind of gelling up. It's a little bit thicker than I would hope. So I'm going to add 25 more. 150 milliliters wouldn't be an unreasonable amount of water, so another 25 yet. But we'll just take it one squirt at a time. I think that looks good. So when I think it looks good, I'll let it just sit. I'll go through and I'll get all of the other jars up to that point. Usually I'll walk away. I'll come back, I'll shake them a couple times and I'll walk away uh, and then we'll open them up and I'll take a close look at one or maybe run one through a sieve and see am I catching anything and I'll probably go ahead and just sieve them all. So that will be next. So this is how I sieve them. I use a rubber bowl. I love these. And you notice the sieve, the, the actual filter area is not anywhere near the size of a bucket so it easily fits on these. And I'll just take my mixed glaze. This is uh, the oil spot cover with the eggshell. And you'll notice I left it thick. I could have thinned it before this, but I'm going to work this through and I'm going to give it a little bit of a rinse at this point and then I'm going to take and pour everything out of the rubber uh, bowl and give that a little bit of a rinse too, like 15 mils rinse in each case, maybe 20 mils and uh, when it gets back it'll be a little bit more thinned out so that, that's how I do it. There's definitely some waste in this process but in this case it didn't take out much but there are some fine little grainy particulates that I'm glad we got out and to make sure that everything was mixed well. So from here I'll just pour that back in, rinse it out and move on to the next one. Okay so let's get to dipping. I have the whiting version of the oil spot combo and the eggshell here and I'm going to put them on these two vessels. A little more slender of the two will be the eggshell just for reference. Let's get to dipping. Nothing bugs me more than getting fingerprints on the raw clay. So I'm going just as deep as I can without touching the bottom and hopefully not touching the sides. There, that's nice. The heavier this goes on, hopefully the better the oil spot. But I'm just going to do one dunk. That looks good. Okay, now let's get the cover glaze on. You can see I touched the inside of the jar there a little bit. Hard to get deep on that one. Not sure why, but and it looks like it went on a little bit thicker. So this is the one with the eggshell. So here are the oil spots close up. This is the whiting on the slightly bigger bottle and our eggshell. 
Okay, so on to the Val's Rivulet, which is the Ashley's Rivulet alternative. And I tend to use rivulets in terms of a dip on top of something else. I think that's what they're made for generally. It's not unique to me. So I put some sea foam on each of these bottles. And I'll go ahead and I'll put the eggshell on the big one. I'll put the standard whiting recipe on the small one. And we'll see what it does. Because I don't know how, how much it's going to make it run, I'm, I'm not inclined to give it a whole bunch. So that's what I'm going for. You knew I was going to touch the wall. Well, there you go. Two tests in one. That's clearly a lot thicker. I've just mixed all of these. Uh, this one definitely uh, gels up a little bit more. So we'll see what happens next. So I'm loading the kiln and I see that I have a spot for one more. And so I'm going to do this face with the rest of the test uh, oil spot the eggshell oil spot. So it's unlikely I'm going to keep the glaze in the test jars anyways. And so this is my my glaze waste bucket and I'm just going to go for it and we're going to start with the Temaku. Not perfect, that's okay. And I'll wait for this to finish dripping and in a minute I'll pour over the cover. And now for the cover glaze. And there we go, we'll see what that looks like. <laughs> I have high hopes. So here it is before the glaze firing. It's always fun to have a particular piece in your firing that's going to make you excited to wake up in the morning and go see what happened. So a Hail Mary like this using up the rest of the glaze test seemed like a good idea. So look what came out of the kiln. Look at this beauty. This was the rest of the test bottle of eggshell Temaku uh, Piers oil spot combo. I think it turned out really good. Let's look at the test bottles though. So, kind of fail on the oil spot there. This is the eggshell. Right away I noticed that the eggshell is quite a bit more, uh, I don't know, golden? Certainly lighter in my in this lighting. And I don't necessarily f fault it for not oil spotting. It, was, it clearly was a coverage issue. It needed to be thicker. I, it looked thin to me, but I wanted to be fair. And if I mixed it up and gave it another dunk, it could have also given us a really thick white coating with no oil spots at all. So, so I don't fault it for that. But this fine oil spotting, kind of what have I what I expected really like this Temaku though. So, I'm also glad that we threw it on a big vase. You can see, kind of stood up a little bit. Had some, I mean it's not really thin. So, let's look at the other one. Now remember, this is Val's Rivulet. 30% of this recipe is, is whiting, or in this case, eggshell. I think this is a success. I think they both look really good. And in fact, the fact that you can't tell the difference goes to show that, that home-fired eggshells is a reasonable substitute for whiting in this recipe. So, success.